honor to invite His Excellency Mr. Nicolas Maduro Moros, President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, to address the conference. And I request, and he is also going to speak on behalf of NAM, the Non Aligned Movement. I request the protocol to escort His Excellency. Good morning. To my brother Rafael Correa, President of the Friendly Republic of Ecuador, I wish to convey at the outset the warm greetings to the people of Ecuador, also to the people of Quito. Throughout history, this has been the land of our father, of other giants also, the General Alfaro Quito and Marshal Sucre. This is thus is an ideal location, and we are happy to be here at the third Habitat Conference on housing and sustainable urban development. Mr. Secretary General Ban Ki Moon, Mr. Peter Thompson, President of the General Assembly of the United Nations, Mr. Juan Close, Secretary General of the Habitat Conference. distinguished uh, members and heads of delegation. We have come to this conference, the third Habitat Conference, after traveling the road from Vancouver in 1976 to Istanbul in 1996 and all roads have led to Quito. In seeking through the United Nations system and through the human race a road forward to meet one of the major problems created through development and capitalism of the 20th century, the problem of housing of family stability, of communities, the problem of poverty and huge migration waves throughout the regions, throughout our countries, throughout this 20th century, which have led uh, to the urban explosions and the concentration of enormous numbers of migrants within our countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, in Africa and in Asia, which above all affect the countries of the South. These are, they're affected by very serious problems in access to land, urban land, the rights of the city, the right to development, to housing, to the community, and the right to peace. So we welcome the fact that the social organizations of the world and the United Nations system, together with the Habitat system, have persevered in sustaining this movement that began in 1976 in Vancouver at, and then in, 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 in Istanbul in 1996 and which brought us to Quito with this important declaration of the new urban agenda with commitments very direct and tangible commitments recalling the experience 
of the past and the challenges, establishing the challenges that our countries must address. Venezuela has seen modest development since 1999. We have seen extraordinary experience with a revolution in housing and habitat as part of the social dimension of the democratic revolution, the peaceful constitutional revolution that uh, be was begun by Commandant Hugo Chavez all those years ago. And in our constitution in Venezuela, we, which was drawn up with the broadest possible participation of the people. The first uh, uh, constitution in 200 years voted uh, through a referendum by the people. For the first time, I say, in the 1999 constitution, where we see the right to housing as a fundamental human right in Article 82 of the Chapter on Human Rights. For the first time, I say, we see this right to housing given the, right to the status of a constitutional right, a fundamental right to support families and communities. And from 1999, there were many attempts on the basis of the definitions of Vancouver and Istanbul, and on the basis of this search to overcome the capitalist model, which defines land and housing as goods rather than the rights of peoples and families, there was a process that brought us from 1999 to 2011, we tried various approaches and we saw some successes, partial successes, but they need to be sustained through financing. In 2011, the experience that we had been sharing with the governments throughout the world, when Venezuela, when Hugo Chavez founded the housing movement in Venezuela as a special mission. This was set up as a major mission, and there were five central pillars of this movement, which together under a single mandate made it possible to focus efforts of our republic on the central objective in addressing the challenges of housing. So we had these five fundamental pillars. The first is land, the right to land, the social function of land, which is set out perfectly through the Quito Declaration of 2016. Democratization of the use of urban land, reorganization of land. Thus, a special law was adopted for that purpose. It made it possible to reorganize urban matters and the use of urban land in connection with the right to li life, the right to housing, and the social functions attached to those. Secondly, financing. That is the second pillar, financing the use of the resources of the public and private sectors, in investment of resources in the national currency and internationally in dollars, this made it possible to focus financial resources of our country on housing, social housing, to address this problem and the generation in terms of financing of new mechanisms to provide true, genuine access of workers, men, women, peasants, uh, female-headed households, people with disabilities, teachers, po police officers, army personnel, 
all people to have access to financing in order to obtain direct access to the right to housing. That's the second pillar, I say, financing. And we talked about the pillars of popular power. The, it's organized by the people to define these projects. There's a, people are constructing for themselves. Now in Venezuela, we can say that the experience has resulted in 40% of the housing that's being built over these successful years being built directly by communities. They designed the projects themselves and built them themselves with the support and financing of the government and the support of their right to property, to urban and, and uh, urban land. That is the, uh, the, that is another pillar. The next pillar that allowed for progress is connected with the organization of materials, machinery. Now, so we see from our experience the industrialization of the right to housing. This is a central concept, industrialization, concentration of resources, material resources, uh, cement, uh, access to building materials by people carrying out projects, social organizations mainly, and another pillar in the six, this uh, project of ours over the years is the executive pillar. There are three levels. First of all, there's public bodies committed to the project, public organizations, ministries that made it possible to establish uh, who is responsible for what. Secondly, we have the power of the people, social power, social organizations, uh, duly involved and supported in the technical, architectural, and other aspects. And the third is the private sector. That's the third partner, nationally, internationally. And we have built important alliances with countries that provided technology, capital, experience in carrying out projects. The People's Republic of China has considerable experience in building cities throughout the country. The Islamic Republic of Iran has also excellent experience in quality, fast urban construction. Portugal, Spain, the Russian Federation, Belarus, India, a huge international alliance which made it possible for us to bring our country, bring to our country new technologies and incorporate the latest advances in architecture globally with a dialogue of civilizations taking place on the ground as regards the art of architecture for our people. These are the pillars that made it possible for us to make progress like never before in building uh, housing for our communities. Over the past five years, we have achieved this and provided to ordinary families a million 760,000 housing units. Uh, this is a country with 28 million inhabitants. The, challenge, the objective this year is uh, that uh, by December we plan to hand over one and a half 
million housing units and move towards the objective of the National Housing Census, uh, which we currently in uh, uh, 2011, three million housing units by 2019. That is the um, housing mission in Venezuela, which has made it possible to carry out a miracle in the transformation of our cities, overcoming poverty for our country and to move forward and implement the Vancouver and Istanbul principles in synergy with the Quito Declaration. Now, investment over these five years to achieve these objectives and this urban transformation with this reorganization in our country has been 95 thousand million dollars which is four times our GNP and these sums this is the biggest sum that has been inverted, invested in the, in the history of our country this has made it possible for us to trust that the objectives in the Quito Declaration will make it possible for us to strengthen this housing policy. I want to share with you another experience, another project that we have carried out in the past four years with a plan to reorganize uh, existing districts, the new district uh, plan, it's a complementary plan. The housing mission plans to hand over 3 million units, as I was saying, by 2019 for new communities. The new uh, districts uh, project plans to repair and reconstruct with communities. We have made progress on this object. About 1 million housing units have been renovated and this is a shared dream. By 2019 we want to have 6 million uh, renovations, renovations and new housing units altogether for these modest districts. All of this is under the constitutional mandate that for the first time we have been able to incorporate in Article 82. And under the new urban agenda, we are converting our new uh, communities into the epicenter of uh, public efforts for health, culture, production. We want productive communities. In the delegation, we have the Minister of Housing and Habitat Development, as well as the Minister for uh, Urban Culture. We have important urban econo economic projects for urban, econ urban agriculture to change the paradigm. We have, particularly in oil producing countries like Venezuela, we turn into dependent consumers of products imported from outside and we had stopped producing our own produce. We need to change the productive culture. Generations have not been involved in the uh, sacred relationship with Pachamama, with the earth, producing, creating with our own hands from the soil. So in these urban economic projects for the new communities, we have a special project that we want to share in the working group, urban agriculture as a flagship project in our efforts. The same is true for culture, sport. The new or reconstructed communities need to be the center of comprehensive development of social and economic rights. They need to be able to live well. This is what we must bring about. Likewise, Mr. President and delegations, we wish, we believe that this statement and these plans must turn into a commitment. International plans 
and we must involve other aspects of United Nations activity. These are being debated in the non-aligned movement and throughout all of the debating bodies. Humanity now is looking with pain at the refugee crisis, at terrorism, at the Mediterranean crisis, the European crisis. And there seems to be a sort of silence imposed. We, there's a profound crisis and we don't seem to identify the causes. We are hearing certain European authorities not addressing the true causes of the refugee crisis. The cause, of course, is the destruction of their, the refugees' countries of origin. Certain countries like Libya have been destroyed by bombardment, destroying homes and families. Others have been affected by poverty, by inequality, by hunger. These people need jobs and uh, stable housing. We need to exchange missiles for housing. Would that not be better to calculate the cost of the bombs being dropped on these people in Syria and invest all of those millions of dollars in noble projects built by humanity, which can be a reality? We take this opportunity to use this forum to point to that. The cause of re the refugees in Europe cannot be addressed by persecuting our brothers in uh, the Arab countries, Muslim brothers, African brothers. It must be combated by investing in development, health, education, housing, habitat, and the right to life. The non-aligned countries are raising a banner of justice, equality, and peace. And the new urban agenda is essentially an agenda of peace. We dream of a new world. There's a dialogue of civilizations. We believe profoundly in that. We need a human civilization that holds dialogue with mutually respect, mutual respect for uh, culture, uh, politics, and for our differences. Then we can speak of development of an agenda of peace. Likewise, we have a proposal to make to the G77 China, the Secretary General of UNASUR, the Secretary General uh, Ban Ki-moon. Uh, we call urgently for solidarity for Haiti. Recently, a delegation of our government went to Haiti. And, you know, the disaster of inequality, the invasion of dictatorships have been added to by the earthquake of 2010, and Haiti was just getting to its feet, and now Hurricane Matthew has left many thousands of families homeless and wouldn't know where to sleep. We call urgently for assistance for Haiti. The non-aligned movement proposes an urgent initiative, urgent initiative for there to be a meeting in New York, a solidarity meeting focused on the people of Haiti in order to join forces physically, materially, financially to go to help Haiti, support Haiti. Let us leave that proposal with you in this conference on housing, habitat, and social and sustainable development. Looking at the new urban, urban agenda and the Quito Declaration, I want 
to thank all of the movements, the social organizations, the officials who have worked so hard and passionately to uphold these proposals for sustainable de development of the right to the city, democratization of urban land, the right to financing. That's one of the key points mentioned by the mayor of Quito, Mr. Roda. He spoke today of financing. That is key. Access to financing in our countries access to new technologies. We believe that there needs to be efforts focused on that, on the basis of uh, this successful world conference headed by our brother Rafael Correa. We must focus on turning into reality uh, accessible financing for our peoples and implement the principles contained within the new urban agenda which we commit ourselves to. President Correa, thank you very much for the invitation and the Bolivarian revolution is always marching forward and we will be first in the battle for freedom and for peace within the world. Thank you. <coughs> the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela.